What's up you guys? Welcome to today's video. As you can tell by the title, I have a very good one for you guys today. I'm going to tell you 12 times that Orange is the New Black got it right. And my opinion is very biased and very judgmental. So you get what you get. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a person in long-term recovery who has in fact gone to prison. See? Yeah. Glamour shot. <laughs> if you want to follow me on any other social media platform, TikTok, Instagram, Patreon, and that's two dollars. It's only ever going to be two dollars. All of that is linked down below, as well as my vlog channel and my podcast that doesn't exist. We're working on it. It's, it's fine. Everything's fine. All right. Without further ado, let's kick this thing off. So hear me out. Hear me, hear me, YouTube people, friends, ride or die crew. I am not a fan of Orange is the New Black. I have, however, learned to appreciate the show for a couple of different reasons that we're gonna get into. So I'm not a huge fan, but I cannot even tell you how many times a day on TikTok or YouTube or wherever that people are like, yo, how close is it? to Orange is the New Black. So generally speaking, if it's a TV show, it's not realistic, but some shows come pretty close. You know, there are some things in the show that are great. So again, please don't beat me up too much for not being a huge fangirl of the show. Wentworth is better, I said what I said. Number one, old charges coming back to bite you in the ass. So we see Piper get locked up for something that she did with Alex many moons ago. Um, and this is a very real thing. I saw it all the time. I know plenty of people that quit the life, quit selling drugs, and they ended up in prison years later. Uh, Mindy, a really good friend of mine, she was out of the game for two years when the feds arrested her. Freeway Rick Ross, same kind of deal. He was out for years and one more deal, put him back in, you know? Stuff happens like that. But old charges coming back, a thousand percent yes. Number two, shower shoes made from pads. Ugh. I would rather like eat bugs, like cockroaches or like grasshoppers or something. I would rather eat literal bugs than walk into a prison shower without shoes on. I would rather kick a dog. I love dogs. I would never. Than walk into a prison shower without shower shoes on. It is disgusting. It is the grossest thing you will ever see. It is slimy. There's hair, blood, period blood. Uh, and I know what you're thinking, like, don't people clean the showers? Aren't there supplies to clean the showers? Sure, yeah, mm -hmm, there are. So if you ever go to prison, just wear shower shoes. But if you're not gonna take my advice, there's some consequences. There's infections that can happen and it's just nasty, it's vile. It is vile. To talk about the cleaning supplies just for a second, <laughs> you guys, <laughs> the cleaning supplies are a joke. I mean, some prisons use the right cleaning products, but the mops, let's talk about the mops for a second. The mops, in my experience, go from every single housing unit, every dorm, you know, and everyone's shower, they, they share them and they stink. They have this like moldy, weird, dirty smell to them. And maybe if you went to prison, you did prison time at a facility that washed their mops. But listen, they don't smell good, okay? And I don't trust it and just wear shower shoes. So the pad shower shoes, thousand percent thousand percent. I will do anything to not walk into a shower, prison shower, without shower shoes. In fact, that habit has translated because if I'm staying in a hotel, hey, hey, I'm wearing flip-flops in the shower. Unrelated, how cute is my cup? It has mushrooms on it. And I know you guys want to see my nails. Okay, moving on. Number three, tampon grossness. I could just leave it there, but then I wouldn't be me. So you know the scene where Piper gets a tampon in her food because she pissed off Red, the cook? Yeah, I could see that happening with food for sure. Um, I've seen it happen like under someone's pillow. I've seen it happen in someone's laundry, like bag in their laundry bag. I've seen it happen, where else? I think maybe in someone's shoe. So if you piss someone off, you're gonna get a used tampon -y. It's not food coloring, it's not nail polish, it's, it's blood. And they did it with actual malice. <laughs> Yes, so accurate. So if you ever find yourself in a situation, jail, prison, be respectful. And it is so hard because you could completely unintentionally disrespect somebody, you know? <sighs> Shit happens. Or you could just catch somebody on like a really bad day, you know? So it could be a total accident, but you made someone mad, tampon under the pillow. If you're in an open dorm, you get used to like checking your stuff, you know? So I can put up a picture of an open dorm versus a closed tier. An open dorm looks like a gym with a bunch of beds in it, a bunch of um, bunk beds or racks, if you will. 
if you're in the military or prison. So you get in the habit of kind of looking over your stuff, not your locker if it's locked. If you left it unlocked, you're an idiot or you're me and you have ADHD. That's also, I'm also an idiot. <laughs> but you get into the habit of like lifting up your pillow, lifting up your mattress, kind of just doing a quick search when you go back at the end of the day, like, you know, for your chill time, your downtime, and you're in the dorm. It's just, it became a habit for me at least because I was hyper aware of the fact that there couldn't just, a tampon could be there, sure, but also weapons or just something that should not be there. And people will do that to try to get you kicked out of the dorm or program or whatever. If they don't like you in that unit, they're gonna try to get rid of you. Number four, the cast is so diverse. Spot on magic. I mean, it is so good. The cast is wide range of people from all different backgrounds, all different ethnicities, all shapes, all sizes, everything. And that is accurate. So I really appreciated how they got the cast. I think they did an amazing job with the cast. I really, really do. And again, I'm not a fan of the show. So when I say it, I mean it. Like I really mean it. That cast is great. It really is. When I think of prison, I can really see characters it, from Orange is the New Black and I can see my experience with someone that reminds me of that. Like we all had a crazy eyes. <laughs> we all had a tasty. <sighs> I love the Tasties. They're, they're amazing. Tasty was was great. But we've all had, if you've gone to prison, a woman's prison, you've experienced a lot of these characters. Tiffany, every prison has a few Tiffany's. Contrary to popular misconception or arrogance or ignorance or whatever you want to call it, every female prison, male prison, they all have attractive people in them. I can't tell you how many times I hear like, you don't look like you've gone to prison or you're too pretty for prison. Whatever the hell that means, I don't know what that means. I don't. I don't, I don't see it. Every prison in America has very intelligent inmates as well. It's a very common misconception that if you're in prison, you're not smart. <laughs> well, if you were so smart, how'd you go to prison? I was too smart, bruh. I was too smart for my own good and thought that I could change the system, not the prison system, the way in which people lived. I'm like, I'm not gonna go to work and pay taxes. I'm gonna run a backdoor card game and sell drugs. I thought I knew better. This is completely irrelevant, but I understood from a young age how ridiculously, um, flawed our school system is and the conveyor belt from school to college to jobs and I just I did not want to be on the conveyor belt and I didn't want to conform and that's a really common thing but a lot of inmates are very intelligent people. I could write college level papers in the 10th grade for anyone. I could write you a dissertation on addiction by the time I was 16 and it was it would be really good. <laughs> I just couldn't tell you how to stop using drugs. So riddle me that. Number five, losing your significant other because you're in prison. Spot on, it happens so often. And a lot of times people are like, no, I'm gonna ride with you, babe. I'm gonna ride with you, write you every day, call every day. It's stressful. Not only is it stressful, but if they're gone for years, how is it fair to the person home? It's not. And it, it really shows that when one partner is in prison and the other is in the street, it is very stressful for everyone involved. It's time consuming to have to drive hours and hours away to be able to see your wife or your husband for a couple of hours and then you have to drive home. I and mean, prisons are not typically in the middle of every city. You have to drive out. It is not easy to ride with someone for years while they are in prison. You have to, it's a very one-sided relationship at that point. One person is sending money if they can, writing letters and phone calls and going to visit and the other person is just gone. And that is very, very hard. So a lot of people get Dear John letters, you know, like the, sorry, I love you, but, I, this is this is affecting me. I don't want to do this anymore. My mental health is bad. You're gone. I, I don't I don't want to pause my life because you made a mistake and that's completely fair and completely valid. So that happens all of the time. Number six, Sophia, one of my favorites. She is not able to get her hormones that she needed. Totally, totally a thing. Uh, if if the prison decides that they can't afford it, you're not gonna get it. And that is a lot of medication. If it's not a, if it is not a life saving medication and the prison just can't afford it or doesn't want to do it anymore, you're not going to have it. <laughs> or they can change your medication, like whenever. They can change your antidepressants, they can change what any whatever medication you're on. They can go from one brand to a different brand. Like, you really are helpless at that point. You're at the mercy of the prison. And that is not... That is not easy. A lot of prisons give inmates Seroquel. I don't know why I just thought of that, but I remember specifically, um, out of nowhere, one of the 
doctors or mental health people changed one of my friend's medication from something else to Seroquel and it was really, really strong for her and it was just a really bad time. But they can just do that. Sophia not getting her hormones, thousand percent yes. Number seven, Miss Rosa getting her chemo treatments. This is accurate. So that's a life-saving treatment that she needs. And yes, you would get chemo eventually if you go to prison and you either have cancer going in or you're diagnosed with cancer while you're there, they would treat you for that. I served time in a medium security prison where I did meet uh, a woman that was going through chemo and she was the sweetest person you could ever meet. And we watched her lose her hair. So some of the girls made, uh, they knitted, crocheted, I don't know the difference, they made her hats and headbands and that was just the sweetest moment that I had ever seen. So she went out to get her chemo and she came back and there was, you know, hats and stuff on, on her bed. And uh, so yes, that is accurate. You would be able to get chemo in prison. And I know a lot of people kind of bicker and squalor back and forth like, my tax dollars. Okay, calm down. Do you even know how much of your actual taxed income goes to state and local jails? Number eight, crazy eyes. Just yes just everything about her, yes. <laughs> her whole character, the way that she struggles with her mental health, just everything about Crazy Eyes, everything is just spot on from my, again, very biased opinion. We all had a Crazy Eyes. I loved Crazy Eyes. I just, she just added just enough reality, like real, to keep me invested in the show a little bit. Big Boo, also yes. <laughs> we all had a big boo, a crazy eyes. Like I said that in the beginning and I really mean that. Like her whole character, thousand percent yes. I put number nine as big boo. So maybe you guys are gonna get cheated on that one. Sorry, number 10, prison girlfriend drama. Thousand percent yes. It's probably actually worse than Orange is the New Black showed, but they did show like there's a lot of girlfriend drama, like <laughs> crazy eyes. It just starts off with a bang, you know, like I will cut you. We all know that scene, just legendary. That is accurate. I think honestly, like if I really had to sit and think about it, the prison girlfriend drama is 10 times worse probably than Orange is the New Black even talked about. It is a lot more emotional. It's a lot more volatile. It's a lot of uh, really deep issues. I've seen a lot of domestic violence in prison and I know you wouldn't think that, but it's true. I've seen a lot of emotional abuse, a lot of domestic violence. It's just crazy. A lot of self-harm because relationships didn't work out. So it's worse. Like, it's not like a funny thing like, oh, you're gonna, she's gonna beat you up. Like, no, like the prison girlfriend drama is, it can be funny can be entertaining, but it can also be very dark. And I feel like I should make an entire video on it now because but yeah, there's definitely prison drama. There's definitely people trying to get with you and hitting on you and it's a whole thing. So the prison girlfriend drama, yes, it's accurate. I would just say if I had to critique it, it's more dark and it's more volatile than the show showed. Number 11, Tiffany's overdose. With this, this is a very common thing. The only nitpick that I have is that she was alone in like the laundry room, I believe it was, and that would typically not happen. In my experience, inmates, if they're in the kitchen, if they're in medical, the rec yard, the chow hall, the library, there is always officers there in those common areas. So overdoses happen all of the time in prison, um, but I don't think that it would have happened in the laundry room. If she would have died, if this was a real life thing and she would have died from an overdose, she would have died alone in like her cell. But if she was in a laundry room, there would have been staff there. And I know a lot of people are like, well, the sh they were understaffed in the show and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't happen like that. <laughs> if they're understaffed, guess what? Inmates are locked down. They're not just roaming around the prison. But that's like a video for another time because I'm also going to be doing 10 to 2,700 times Orange is the New Black got it wrong, so stick around for that. Finally, number 12 is Nikki, just yes, Nikki's drug addiction. And not only that, uh, it's like a two-parter, Nikki's drug addiction and the access to drugs in prison. It was close enough. You get the idea in Orange is the New Black that obviously Nikki's a drug addict, a lot of the inmates are drug addicts, and you get the feeling that she can use drugs in prison and that she can get them pretty easily. So it was, it was pretty good, it was pretty close. And Nikki's battle with addiction is obviously very hard to watch. Uh, but yeah, I would say that watching her battle was one of the most just raw and like mo most vulnerable scenes for me personally. Um, I, I really related a lot to Nikki, so I like her. 
I think they did that right. All right, you guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I'm going to also be filming, like I said, the million times that Orange is New Black got it wrong. If you don't already know, I am a partner with Groups Recover. They are a both online and in-person treatment program. I always list them in the description box of every single video. If you know someone struggling with addiction or if you're struggling with addiction, they're incredible. They believe in harm reduction. They're 420 friendly. I would not trust anyone else with you guys. But I'm gonna end today's video here. As always, I love you. Stay safe, stay in recovery, whatever that looks like to you. I'm sorry if I upset you with this video as I am not an orange is the new black stan. Yeah, but <laughs> I will see you guys in my next one.